This time on Lantern Lab, we've gone British. Here's my Tilly X246. It's from the mid-1950s, burns kerosene, and has seen better days. Let's see if we can't do something to improve it. I'll start by pulling the vent and burner assembly. On this particular lamp, the bale holds the vent captive, so I'll spread the bale to release it. Next, remove the frame by unscrewing it from the fount. Sometimes these are really tight. A pair of pliers with some leather to protect the lamp will help. With the frame removed, we can pull the valve. This one looks to have been out before, but these usually come out pretty easily. There's a rubber seal underneath, so they don't have to be super tight. The pump unscrews from the fount. Make sure you're unscrewing the pump body from the tank and not just removing the pump shaft from its assembly. This pump didn't come with a pump leather. Fortunately, my repair kit includes one. The pump body seals to the fount with a rubber gasket. This one is pretty stiff and will get replaced. The end of the pump holds the non-return valve, or NRV. This is a one-way valve that keeps fuel from going back up the pump. It's got a rubber pip that will need to be replaced. It's also got a spring which is bent up pretty bad and will bite me later on. Back to the valve. Remove the rubber seal. This little bushing doesn't have to come off, but I'm removing it to make cleaning the valve easier. Inside the fuel strainer is another pip. This is what shuts off the flow of fuel. This is called a control cock. On this model, the plastic knob unscrews. Some of the newer ones just pull off. There's an O-ring inside here that seals the shaft. The burner comes out by backing off these three little brass bushings at the ends of the air tubes. They were stuck on really tight and required pliers to get started. This burner is in really good shape and doesn't really need to come apart, but I'm doing it anyway. The top of the burner unscrews. There's another mixing tube under there that I later found out unscrews also. The air tubes were more difficult to unscrew than I expected. They all required some heat. The last one was particularly tough, but they all came loose in the end. Most of the components on this lantern will be cleaned in citric acid. The only exception is the fount itself. I've read that whatever Tilly used to plate these doesn't react well to acid and will turn the finish dull. I've got another Tilly with dull plating, so I'm not taking any chances. All of the steel parts go into this bucket, and the brass into the little tub. While the citric acid does its work, I'm going to put some more Neat's foot oil on the pump leather. These ship dry and will absorb a bunch of oil before they seal well. I'm really pleased with how the fount turned out. This is after a couple hours of polishing with Mother's Mag Wheel Polish on a cloth. The plating is thin in a few places, but looks pretty good. After soaking, I scrubbed all the pieces with steel wool. This leaves them nice and clean, but not over polished. I'm using a kit from the Fettle Box. I'll link to their website in the doobly-doo. No affiliation. A friend gave me the kit, and I like it. A sharp pointy thing is useful for getting old pips out. If you look at the new one in profile, one end is fatter than the other. Put the skinny end into the cup. The valve gets a new pip also. The control cock gets two washers. I've seen other kits that only come with one washer, but this one had two, so I'm using them both. Reassembly is simple. Everything goes together just finger tight. This lantern came to me with no vaporizer. This one is used, but still good. One thing to check on these is that the pricker is still there. The vaporizer gets its own rubber seal. If you're used to Coleman prices, you'll find Tilly vaporizers absurdly expensive. The plate behind the pump leather has a flange for the leather to ride on, so make sure the flange is the right way around. The NRV is a common trouble spot. It sits submerged in fuel, so if it leaks, fuel floods the pump tube. It's important that the NRV works correctly, as we'll see later. Don't forget the rubber seal on the pump tube. With the pump assembled, check the function. You should be able to hear air pass through the pump and hear the motion of the NRV. Here's the burner all cleaned up and assembled. Installation of the burner is a little fiddly. The bushings end up pretty near all the way out to the end of the air tubes. 
I decided that I wanted the valve clocked opposite the pressure indicator on this lantern. To do that, wind the bushing most of the way onto the valve, then tighten the valve down until it seats on the rubber seal. Then use the bushing to lock it in position. It takes a couple tries. The cage goes back on next. Don't over tighten it. It'll be hard to take apart next time. Then the pump. I've been waiting for this for a long time. Brand new glass. It's aftermarket, but it looks pretty good. I got these Petromax mantles a few years ago and was surprised to find that a bunch of them were double tie. Actual Tilly mantles are available and they're a little easier to install. Installing a double tie mantle can be frustrating. Take your time. Remember the bail clips when installing the vent. Tilly lanterns have a pressure gauge of sorts. When the little metal stud here rises to the top, you know there's enough pressure. I messed around with this one a bunch and it didn't move until I put fuel in the fount. Now it seems to work fine. Lighting a Tilly lantern is a process I've covered before. The Tilly torch gets soaked in alcohol, then light the torch and wait. It's pretty cold out, so I'm going to reload the torch and burn it again before I try lighting the lantern. Here I'm doing a soft start. The valve is open and I'll just add pressure until the lantern lights. I like doing a soft start on a newly rebuilt lantern. It ensures there isn't much pressure if something goes wrong. And something is wrong. The pump pushes back out of the tube. If I pump it a couple times it'll stay down, but only because kerosene has gotten around the cup and is leaking out of the top of the pump. You can see the result. With gasoline this would be a little dangerous. Kerosene isn't that volatile, so it's a lot less scary. To show you what I mean, check this out. The kerosene won't catch fire without some kind of wick. This is one reason some people prefer kerosene. The pump is leaking because of that bad spring I mentioned earlier. I'll replace it with one scavenged from a clicker pen. The spring is too long, so I'll cut it down. If the spring is too strong, the NRV will restrict air and not work. It's right when the pump tube stays dry, but you can easily pump air into the fountain. A working NRV makes a popping noise. Later I discovered a burr around the inside edge of the lip that holds the pump tube seal. There was a consistent leak between the pump tube and the part that threads into the tank that went away after I removed the burr. A spray bottle of soapy water was a big help in finding that leak. Well that's about it for this one. I'd strongly encourage you to get a Tilly Lantern. Although they're different than Coleman, they can be great fun. As always, thanks for watching.